Revelation 1354, from the 26th of March 1940. Subordination of the Will Liberation of the Mind If the will of man subordinates itself to the divine will, then that transformation takes place in the soul of man, which liberates the spirit. The transformation of thoughts has now taken place, the will, which before rebelled against the Creator, has now become soft and docile, man recognizes the wisdom and love of the Creator, and he knows that only the love of God always determines every event, and thus he submits to everything that comes over him. And now the spirit is free, which before was inhibited by the will striving against God. Now a change of the whole man takes place. He now lives in a sphere that was previously foreign to him. The spirit in him gives him knowledge of his true home, and now that the will of man is no longer an obstacle, he is also able to imagine this home vividly, because he lets himself be guided by the spirit that announces himself to him. Also the weak-willed person can be easily guided, by both good and bad power, but the weakness of the will does not contribute to the complete liberation of the spirit. For the weakness of the will is always exploited by the opposing power and strengthened in a God-rejecting sense. Man must in full consciousness subordinate his will to the divine will. A certain willpower to turn to God, is also necessary. While the weakness of the will makes man fickle, but does not always decide for God. To subordinate one's own will to God, will always cost a certain struggle, for man is far more likely to demand that which is opposed to the divine will. So, if he wants to serve God, to fulfill his will and to submit himself unconditionally to the divine will, he must be in constant struggle with his desires, with himself and everything that seems to be beneficial to the body. But this constant struggle with himself also leads him closer to victory. Once he has succeeded in completely defeating his will and acknowledging only the divine will, divine love gives him far more precious things than he has given up. He slowly glides from this earth into the spheres of the spiritual. He recognizes more and more the worthlessness of everything he gave up and the precious treasure he has now lifted. God himself offers him something that cannot be acquired on earth in any other way. He imparts divine truth, deepest knowledge and highest cognitive power to him. And thus man basically begins a second life, which deviates considerably from the previous one, earthly life recedes into the background, and before the spiritual lie of man, the love, wisdom and omnipotence of God reveals itself. Man gains insight into divine activity, and the meaning and purpose of creation becomes apparent to him. For when man has sacrificed his will, he has fulfilled the actual purpose of life. He has recognized his origin out of God and now no longer resists him, but turns to him with full consciousness and free will. He has given up his resistance, which for thousands of years moved the being to flee God and now seeks to achieve the final union with him, and thus the subordination of one's own will to the divine will is absolutely necessary for the final redemption of the soul. Amen.